in Booyao. This is the way I run the webinars. I will do the presentation first. If I say something that um, gives you pause, you have a question, just go ahead and ask your question. Answer your que ask your question, and when the presentation is over, I will jump right into it. Now, today we're going to talk about something that a lot of people have questions about, and I've I've have a lot of experience with it. But before we get into it, I need your word. As I said before, when I was in the military, you know, we had to say the oath. When I was in high school, well, I've been I went to school back in that era where you said pledge allegiance to the flag. Uh, a lot of people think that stuff is kind of hokey pokey or it doesn't really matter. And I'm not a United States American. I'm not a United States citizen or an American. And even though I live here and be benefit from this country, uh, but for you, I want you to say these words and this is going to be every day. So if you don't like it, tough titty, you should love it. I pledge to make myself better today than I was yesterday. Day by day, I will become the hustler I know I can be. I am all in. And the, you should mean it. Because as you reformat your mind and you started focusing on the right stuff and moving that crap that doesn't matter, that doesn't make you happy, doesn't make you healthy, doesn't make you wealthy out of your life, you leave more room for more happiness, more health and more wealth. All right. Someone uh, had popped this up because some of the, the task I was doing and I had heard about the movie, but I never saw it. I actually watched it this morning and uh, it's a pretty good story and it embodies a lot of the things that I love about Craigslist. Um, excuse me. I love Craigslist. You know, a lot of people just kind of are a little leery because they hear the Craigslist killer and all this other stuff. At this point in my life, I would say I've done close to 8,000 transactions on Craigslist. There's not more. I've lost count. And I've met some great people. I've made friends. What he did is I see it. I see it. I've actually had people buy stuff from me from Craigslist and invite me to birthday parties, weddings, special events, holiday dinners. These are people just meeting on Craigslist. So if you're a cool person with a cool vibe, you can do this. Um, it's pretty cool. Now, we will not be doing any of the stuff that he did. Uh, that's not going to be any of the task for 30 days to $2,500. But I would advise you to go ahead and check it out. Go to Netflix, watch it. Uh, I think Hulu, check it. It's a great story and it just opens up your eyes to the possibilities because this guy managed to go 30 days from the generosity of people on Craigslist and travel the country. It's possible. That's the hustler mindset. That's the epitome of the hustler mindset of saying, A, this is what I want. B, I'm willing to pay this price to get it. That That's really it. It's, it's an awesome story. I, I love Craigslist. You know, they're making a lot of changes. But, you know, I've made a ton of money on Craigslist. I found space. And I got the happy ending. Um, just as an aside, I don't do... The online dating thing like Match.com, OkCupid, okay, Plenty of Fish. I don't do that stuff. Um, tried those sites years ago. Hated them. Didn't like the whole thing. I've met, and I'm just going to tell you this. I have met one girl I was dating on Craigslist who was a trust fund baby. She was worth 11 mil. Gorgeous girl. So we're still friends to the day. I have probably met women, and I'm just saying this because everyone thinks that if you meet someone on Craigslist that there's some weird, crazy over-the-top killer person I've met a high caliber level of woman on Craigslist several times several times and you know like I said I may do the dating guy I mean not because I'll just give you a hint if you can write a well-constructed profile that's 90% of the battle if it's grammatically correct it makes sense that's 90% of the battle but Craigslist is an awesome resource now we will be doing things with Craigslist in this course, but it won't be the stuff that he's doing. His stuff was more of what can I possibly do? I know that I could go to any city that has a decent Craigslist page and within a month be making enough money. Yeah, within a month be making enough money to support myself, live in what part of town I want to live in because that's just how vibrant it is. It's just really how you want to position yourself. But there will be some Craigslist tasks. Uh, we'll be using Craigslist quite a bit, but from a different perspective. Now, 
watching it, he actually ended up in New Orleans. And uh, I don't think I've ever mentioned this in a lot of videos. So maybe some of the earlier ones. We used to have an ID where we sold new furniture. So after Katrina, due to, there was just all kinds of stuff. I mean, if you understand just how devastating this was, if you were there, you could not go to New Orleans and come back unaltered. You just couldn't do it. You, you, you simply could not do it. We made several trips and we delivered furniture to a lot of parts in Louisiana. And remember, Savannah got hit too. So we delivered furniture and stuff to Savannah. The devastation just going down. I mean, we saw a boat in a tree. We saw a car on top of a building. I mean, it just this crazy landscape of what doesn't belong here all over the place. I mean, it was just so surreal to go mile after mile after mile after mile to see this kind of devastation. We were heading into New Orleans and we were at this intersection and there was this building to us and we we're just looking at it and the building there was a birds there was some birds and they just took off and the, the, we just saw smoke and just the side of the building just came down just can't I mean it was just it was creepy because you was just like there was the devastation the, the weirdness um I saw boats that sh I mean this I saw boats that were like several miles away from the ocean it, it was just crazy 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 and you know, my partner was like more of the altruistic type person of our partnership. And, you know, she was crying. She was just crying. She just couldn't. I mean, you just see that stuff. You could not be unaffected. It, you just couldn't. And it was amazing. I remember we were leaving and uh, passed a furniture store and they had all their upholstery out there because all that stuff was going to get mold and crazy stuff. They couldn't sell it. And, you know, when you think about the storage units, they're all ground level. There's a lot of people who didn't have insurance that completely lost the contents of their storage units due to water damage. I mean, it was just utterly, utterly amazing. And I feel privileged to have seen it up close and personal and talk to people and notice the resilient spirit of a lot of people in New Orleans. But it, it just shows you how you should start working on your life and working on being happy and working on building a life of intent and design because, you know, just like, like I'm, I'm here in Atlanta, I'm here in the South. And for me, the snow apocalypse and it did nothing. I mean, I didn't get cabin fever because I work from home. So I'm not, I'm always home. There, I, I will tell you, there are days that sometimes I only leave the house for two or three days. So cabin fever is not a thing. That's, you know, that's just something that happened with the writing lifestyle because you just get used to being inside and you know that's why i go for walks and stuff but due to the fact that i built this life of intent and design i wasn't impacted what i made money my business went on um you know actually the first time it happened i had people staying with me because uh, it happened like within two weeks this time people were like hell to the no i'm not getting out of my car and honestly i think Atlanta getting embarrassed the way that they did actually made the second round because if what happened the second time happened the first time we would have had several maybe a few hundred people die if not more die die so in a strange way it kind of worked out because that fear of getting caught kept a lot of people off the road because like I said every day I went out you know I have four wheel drive I live up I live at the bottom of the hill I got up the hill Every day, no problem. But there was really, the second time, there was really no one out. And it just hammered home for me that making that decision I made in 2009, and I really want you to think about this. The decision you make today to commit yourself to doing this stuff could have a serious impact five or six years later. It's not going to start off all pretty, and it's not going to be wonderful. My first book, I started working on July 17th, 2009. Uh, there was a lot of I got hated on. I made mistakes. There was there was grammatical errors. There was all kinds of stuff that went on, and I didn't stop. I mean, I had you know there's forums online devoted to me. It's like Clinton Cameron writes piss poor books. All kinds of stuff, and you have to ask yourself: Are you going to allow the opinions of others, which are justified, you know, take ownership there because I didn't make those mistakes, predicate your future? 
I've had people who want training how to do YouTube and they're so worried about what someone's going to say or someone's going to leave a negative comment that they will not move forward. You cannot live a life in fear of what may come. And going back to that decision, July 17th, I sat down and had a conversation with myself and a conversation with God. And I said, this is the deal. If I can make $50,000 a year from my writing, I'm all in. That was it. I, you know, I didn't have to be a New York Times. None of that. It was just if I can make 50 grand a year from my writing, I'm all in. And part of that is, you know, based on living the storage auction lifestyle, I know how to get stuff for the cheap in any way. Like my bedroom set, it was like $6,000. And I got it new, six thousand dollars in the store. I got it wholesale for fourteen hundred bucks. There are so many ways that you can get the things that you want legitimately through either you know creating a business or networking a partnership. So I mean, I got a BMW X5. I got that sucker eight grand under book value. It took me six weeks to find the deal. I was prepared to go out of state. Uh, I was looking. It's real interesting with that. A lot of the BMWs here in Georgia are leases, but you go to Florida, you go to California, you go to D.C., and a lot of those are for sale by owner. It's totally different ball game. But I also, you know, I'll give you a quick lesson on buying a car. When you do your research, and when I noticed that all these leases of stuff is here, I noticed there was a glut of X5s. I was going all over the country, but I was still doing my research here. I noticed there was a glut, and I started making offers. I walked into a dealership. Because I went and looked at one, and they weren't going to deal. So I left after 30 minutes. Then I went to the next dealership. Salesman said, get in the car. We went around. I told him, this is what I'm paying, and or I'm out. And I had already made up my mind I was going to leave. 45 minutes later, I drove out of there with my car, with my price. If I wreck that sucker today, my insurance company is going to cut me a check for probably like five, dollars $6,000. So just to show you, the hustler mindset isn't about... Money ain't a thing. Big money flop. That's bullshit. I'm the guy that if you see me in the Bentley, you know I got that sucker at a serious deal. If you see me in the Bentley, I didn't pay for retail. I got some kind of deal or someone like I know I got. I was, that's that's the kind of guy I am. So that whole money in it. No, no. Money's a thing. Money's a tool. And you can really, really learn how to build a life if you learn how to get the things you want through other resource channels. So when I made that deal of 50 G's, I was serious as a heart attack because I knew that my 50, me living on 50 G's could be like someone else living on 150 because of my network and because of my contacts. And the fact is, I have no shame in going to Goodwill to buy shit. None. None. Zilch. <laughs> so it would have been a great lifestyle and just the way that things panned out, I wrote the first book and once again, not letting people dictate my future. Because when someone says something negative about you, and let's say it's true. Let's for, the, let's for the sake of this conversation, say it's true. It doesn't have to be true five years from now. It doesn't have to be true tomorrow. It doesn't have to be true next month. So what I'm saying is if you fucked up, you made mistakes, take ownership. You fucked up, you made mistakes. But that doesn't predicate your future. You cannot allow other people to dictate your future. So that's enough of the commentary. Bam. Um, we're going to get into this because social media is big buzzword. Everyone's like social media, social media. I'm going to take you under the skirt of social media because don't believe the hype. I went ahead and made some significant investments in social media. Actually, I had an assistant and we were working Twitter. We were working Facebook. I took webinars. I spent money on courses. And what's really, really interesting about all of that is my first methodology of marketing myself on the web is what I returned to after spending all that money. And uh, bam. Yep, yep, yep. Of course, you know, I'm talking all this stuff and getting all sentimental, but we still are about business. Uh, first task of today, reach out and touch someone. I want you to call 10 people and pitch your business ideal product or concept. If you've been a member of 30 Days to 2500, you should know what I'm talking about because there's tasks. And just to let you know, each day kind of links up to the next day. So if you miss a few days and you're going to like, what the hell is he talking about? It's like picking up a book and the first hat, first few chapters were ripped out. It's still a good read, but you're like, I'm kind of missing something. So 
because it's designed and once again this is designed to be about action this is designed to propel you forward this is designed to make you accountable so a lot of people don't like to call people um a lot of folks if you call them their voicemail isn't even on because people don't leave voicemails anymore everyone's texting and stuff well i reached out one night in the storage auction business and i went through a list and i had you know because we used to collect the people's phone numbers and i just went through and did this power call because uh, we had some very nice stuff about 10 units three units belong to the same person and that person has some very high-end taste I knew I had people in my network, and I was like, you know, it's email blast, but a phone call, people, and I left voice messages. It's like, God, you got to come. I sent you an email. Check your email. I called 150 people that night. Now, understand, I used to be an inside sales, so that's a technique. You need a headset because, <laughs> you know, if you're, like, doing it and holding the phone up to your no, you're losing speed. It's like, dial, 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 bam, you know, say his pitch, dial. I mean, it's a process. So out of that 150 people I called, 45 showed up out the 45 that showed up 10 spent a thousand or more so it was well worth it and today once again going back to some of the earlier things in 2500 day you know 30 days to 2500 dollars if you start doing these things that are personable that make you memorable you're going to get better results than the average person out there hustling because many people are hustling on the lazy tip they're just putting just enough energy to kind of keep the wind stirred but they're not really really elevating their hustle and like picking up the phone meeting people it's it's just a great way for you to get more impact for your business so that's your task 10 people and if you don't have the numbers find them <laughs> here's a little trick everyone doesn't have their facebook page locked down Go to the about page and frequently you'll find a phone number there. Since you already know them, they shouldn't be too weirded out. But um, and also, let's say they are weirded out and say they defriend you. If someone defriends you because you gave them a phone call trying to pitch your business, you have to really evaluate was it really a friendship or was it an acquaintance? And if it's an acquaintance, hey, that's how it is. That's how I look. Look at it. Now, let's just get back into social media. Don't kill yourself with social media. An email list will, and I, I did this when I spent all that money. I had my assistant tweet, Facebook, all kinds of stuff <clears throat> for about, excuse me, for about two weeks hard every day. We had maybe 50,000 contact points. And we got a response level of about 40 people. So I was like, okay, you know, I got my numbers. I was like, okay, so we went up. She was doing all kinds of stuff. Her full-time job was social media management. She was taking webinars, doing stuff. And I spent on her courses and stuff. Now, this was over six months. This didn't happen, like, you know, in one month. About 12 grand. But, you know, because she was getting paid 2000 a month. So... Yeah, she actually was the bulk of it, really, when I think about it. And the net return was nothing. So when I got rid of her, I went back to what I used to do. And my, I'm, 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 I'm just, it's, it's stunning that you can reach out and touch 200,000 people and maybe get 40 or 50,000, maybe 40 or 50 people truly interested in what you have. But you can have an email list of 500 people and send out one email and have way more impact. For substantially less cost. So your number one thing for you selling your products, selling you, selling whatever you have is going to be your email list. That is number one. That's going to be your number one. That's going to be your BFF. That's going to be your best fit friend. Uh, there's a lot of talk about you can make money on Facebook. And I'm going to go ahead and, like I said, lift up the skirt and let you see what's going on. When you see all these Facebook ads from these people who are social media people, I want you to understand there's a social media posse. There is these people, they work hard, they have great businesses. I'm not going to slam them, but the thing is, they work together and they share their list. So you'll have 
social media maven number one list is 50,000 deep then you have social media maverick number two list is 60,000 deep so together there are 110,000 people so what they will do is co-sign each other go to the same list and ball out but the thing is they're giving you information that is effective it works but it doesn't work if you don't have the right network and tools. See, that's the magic ingredient right there. I, like I said, I'm not going to slam these people because some of these people I follow, I watch, and uh, I, I respect them. But the thing is, this goes back to critical thinking. It's like, okay, why is that working for this person, but it's not working for me? And then when you lift up the skirt and you see that their machinery is different, not better, but different, you're like, oh, that's why it's not working for me. And once again, many of these people started off right where you are. They learned the game and they started networking and they built their list. But your email list, number one, is going to crush anything else you can do. It's going to kill. What it, I don't care. I don't care if you have 100,000 um, people on Twitter following you. It, it doesn't matter. Now, I'm going to go ahead and because someone's saying, well, I know this guy and he tweeted something to his followers and he made $50,000. <clears throat> I'm not going to tell you your line. I'm going to tell you why that happened. Demographics. Demographics are very important. If you are 16 to 25, what you do with Twitter is going to be totally different than what I at 47 will do with Twitter because I'm talking to a different crowd. <clears throat> if you send out, hey, there's these new really, really cool Nike kicks and they're like 85 bucks and you can get them here. Bam. Your crowd's going to be all over that because that's what they're into. So once again, it's the followers and the demographics of the followers. If I at 47 had a list of 100,000 on Twitter and it was a vetted list and everybody on that list was interested in things that were interested to people 40 and over, then when I sent out something, that it would be just way more effective. So when you're building your Twitter followers, you got to build it correctly, like just going out like, hey, you know, I'll get you 10,000 followers. That's really a waste of time and money. So it can work if you build it correct, if you have the right demographics. But if you're just starting and, you know, you're just kind of like, huh, how does this thing really work? And understand, social media works very well for bullshit. If you take a picture of yourself doing something absolutely butt naked, stupid, it'll go viral in a heartbeat. Why? Because it's entertainment. It requires nothing from the person. Nothing. So if you want to send some tomfoolery or some fuckery out, oh yeah, it, it will scale, it will cross, you'll see it on your friend's Facebook page. But if you put out something talking about, hey, if you want to take five minutes to improve your future, cricket, cricket, cricket. So understand, when you see these stories, they're true, but you have to look under the skirt and figure out why they're true. Another reason that a lot of early YouTubers became so successful was because of MySpace. MySpace was the only thing going. YouTube was the only video platform going. So what they would do is take their video, take it to MySpace. It will filter through MySpace. And they got, you know, I just look at earlier YouTubers and it's like, yeah, I was, I'm getting like a thousand subscribers a day. No one's getting a thousand. Um, well, that's not true. Only the bigger level YouTubers are getting like a thousand a day because in my level, I have a, a bad day for me is 10 and an excellent day for me is 70 because it fluctuates. It's just there's so many variables that go on with that. So understand you have to really ask yourself, why is this person getting this result? Well, this person's 25. Does that have something to do with it? this person's 30? Because if you notice on YouTube, hardly any business videos go viral unless they're like a funny commercial or something. They don't because people are looking to be entertained. It's a form of escapism. So when you're seeing all this stuff with social media, now social media does work very well for uh, charities, uh, funding, Kickstarters, projects, because it's like, hey, you know, this is our thing and this is what's going on and we want you to donate. It works very well for that. You know, if you can put up some cute puppies or, you know, you're just going to get a big response. So understand. Your email list is number one, and number two is driver. I will talk about drivers in a minute because drivers is part of the platforms. And um, social media can work. I'm not going to say, oh, it doesn't work. But the thing is, I'm going to give you a formula to how to make it work for you. But we'll get to that in a second. Now, these are the usual social. All this is social media. 
I know that's you know the first icon is blogger. The second one is um, God, I forget it because I don't use it. The third one's dig. Then that's your RSS feed, Facebook, Flickr. Yes, Flickr is part of social media. Pinterest is part of social media. Yahoo, WordPress, all this stuff is social media. However, there are some that are better than others. Now, if you go to Reddit, that's the one with the little alien looking thing up there. And you get in because Reddit's this big community. And I think it's probably like second to Craigslist communities. If you can infiltrate that with the right product, you can do well. It's just you have to be one. You have to be part of the tribe. That's what you have to do. But all this is social media and it can be confusing. It can drive you crazy. But you want to get on a springboard platform. Now, let's talk about how you're going to do this. You can waste a ton of time and money on bullshit with social media. Social media is like Goldilocks and the Three Bears. There's a bed that's too big. There's a bed that's too small. There's a bed that's just right. Depending on what you are doing for your business. Once again, let your data, let your business, let your product define what social media you're going to use. And just to give you some illustrations, if you're a woman or a guy selling female products like shoes, makeup, recipes, Pinterest is your bitch. Pinterest will get you so much traffic if you have a female driven, because Pinterest is female driven. If you go up and put a to wrench up on Pinterest, nothing's going to happen. I mean, if you put up a pink wrench on Pinterest going to a cancer platform, that will spread. See, it, it's got to really key in onto things that women are very interested in for Pinterest to work for you. It, it, that's the thing. So you got to do your research. And once you do your research, you'll know this. Oh, that's why Pinterest works. Tumblr. Tumblr, once again, goes back to demographics. Tumblr is picture driven. If you have the right kind of, if you have a product with a neat picture, Tumblr's your place. But you have to do your research to figure out which social media platform works for you and your business now once you do your research and boil it down and you know you're not goldilocks sitting there going oh no it's too big it's too small um you're only going to pick one or two social media platforms and go hey shit on it my two are number one youtube and number two facebook i did the research twitter i'm on twitter i got like 3,600 followers. Not too much happens. You know who responds to my tweets? People who are already in my tribe. Yeah, it, it's like they don't really like travel that much because, you know, I don't do the hashtags. And one of the reasons I don't really get into it is I picked my two social media platforms and I go ape shit on them. I have several Facebook groups. I'm, I'm making videos like a fiend because those are drivers. See, Facebook's a driver. YouTube's a driver. Um, Vimeo is a driver. You know, video is a big driver. And have a presence on all of them. You know, go ahead, set up your profile, be there, link to it. But don't spend a lot of time on all of them. Figure out which ones work for your business. You'll save yourself a ton of money. You'll save yourself a ton of aggravation. Because, you know, if you're selling um, car parts, YouTube. Go ahead on YouTube, demonstrate how you install, do a video installing that car part and link it to your website. That's going to be what I mean. Tweeting it ain't worth it. Facebook, it ain't worth it. YouTube, because auto heads are on YouTube and they're always looking for audio video. And just link up and just start coming in on all the audio videos and keyword your video right. And you get way more traffic doing that with one video. I had a client <clears throat> and I can't tell you who it is, but. I didn't. This person had six videos up on YouTube, did one for his products. He got he paid me fifteen hundred bucks for the consults within 90 days. The new traffic that he got got him his money back times 10 from this one video one. So this is the whole thing you got to understand. Everyone like the old Internet was create this product or this website and get a million eyeballs on it. The new Internet is craft your message to the appropriate people. And what's funny, the new Internet is actually the old school way of doing business. It's kind of funny how that came back around. Now, here are your drivers. <clears throat> your number one is video. That's why you see so many people going to YouTube, setting up channels, uh, actually doing production studios. They've got three and four different cam camera angles. Video is a number one driver 
hands down. Number two after that is podcasting. Number three is tribe building. Now, I use video podcasting and tribe building and Facebook groups. See, if you use several drivers, you multiply your impact. But once again, you have to go back to what are you doing and what you're doing and the data that you get will determine what your drivers are going to be. You know, like I said, let's just say you hate video. When I first started doing video, I was a scary little bitch. It was just me in the basement of my camera, and I was like freaking sweating my bullets because it was new and unfamiliar, and I was way out of my comfort zone. And you have to put yourself in that position. So you got to do your research, but I'm telling you, video, number one driver. And what's happening with video is it's getting crowded. When I joined YouTube in 2009, one of my videos, I had... Maybe the first six, seven months, I had maybe 500 subscribers, but my videos would go up and I would get 800, 900 thousand because they were traveling because no one else was really talking about storage auctions and resale. So they would really travel into the YouTube ecosystem. That's one of the reasons that I was able to build such a strong follow because there was really no one else. Like there's a lot of new people on there talking about resale and they're coming on there. I am probably... Because Dan Dyson from Storage Wars, he had a channel before I did. There's a guy, Will, Terminal 99, he was there. But I am not bullshitting you when I say, when I went to YouTube, there was maybe 20 to 30 people talking about resale. 20 to 30. Now, there's a few thousand. I got in on the ground floor. And that's something that you can do if you're doing your research. There's other communities out there. There's other products. There's other things. Instead of trying to pile on with everyone else, sometimes... It just picks. It just makes the best sense to pick up a machete and, and cut down the brush and blaze your own path. Because that's what I did. Because no one was talking about it. So think about some stuff that no one's talking about that you know a lot about. And you may be able to duplicate exactly what I did. Now, here's another driver. Uh, writing a book that solves a problem. And they're like, what? Writing a book makes you an instant authority. A book can be 30 pages long. It could be 50 pages long. Writing a book makes you an instant authority figure for that subject matter. Instantly. Instant credibility. You can take your 50-page book to your local television show because they're always looking for people. Local author, hustler, you, member. Boom. I haven't done that, and I'm going to tell you why. I knew early on that the storage auction thing wasn't going to last forever, and I didn't want to get typecasted as the storage auction guy forever and forever. That's why I did not go to my local media and do that stuff. And some people are like, well, you shot yourself in the foot. I, I, you know, if I did, I did. But I'm not typecasted as that storage auction guy. And if I did those things, like went to the radio station, went to, because like I said, I had, a, I've got a five year plan, I got a 10 year plan, I got a 20 year plan. And I thought the storage auction thing would have been over much sooner than it really was. Because there's other stuff that I was just chomping at the bit to start, like doing this and this type of training. So you have to really create your life plan because that's one of the things that we do in the Hustler Mindset because many people go ahead and create a business plan, but they don't create a life plan. You should create your life plan first and then arrange your business around your life plan. It's just so much different because, you know, for me, you know, honestly, I could make more money, but I cherish the freedom that I have more so than money. The freedom to wake up, like I was saying, talking about the snow apocalypse. My life didn't change. It didn't change one bit. Went to the store, got some extra vittles, as they said on the Beverly Hillbillies. It, you know, I was fortunate. My power never went out, not even the flicker. Um, around here, the utilities are underground, so that helps out a lot. And it was just, you know, my heart was aching for the people who got stuck. I mean, you know, people had their roofs crashed, trees were falling on people. It was really, really bad. But the decision that I made in 2009, I really want you to think about this as you're sitting there listening to this. The decision that you make today to go forward with this and stay with it, you have no idea how much of a beneficial impact it could have on your life five years from now. Because when I look back, and the first year was very rocky because everyone was like, you should go back in the storage auction business. You should do this. You should do that. I didn't have a lot of support. My, my friend Francine, my best friend in life, she supported me. Um... A lot of other folks, no, not really. And if I had buckled to the pressure, and it was pressure, it was a lot of pressure. Remember, I was sick before, you know, I was recovering. So I wasn't like in a robust mental and physical situation at that point. 
And I'm just like, you know what? I'm going to do it. If I fail, I fail, but I'm going to do this. And every time I look back at those dark days in the beginning, and they were dark, I am so glad I stuck to my guns because if I didn't, I wouldn't be talking to you today. So you, you really have to ask yourself if the things that you want, because if it's unconventional, if you're like looking at making money from home or running a, a hustle like eBay, Amazon, Amazon, you know, a lot of people you meet who have regular jobs, they're not going to understand you. And there's always going to be that. Really? So that's really working out for you. Forget the fact that you're driving an X5. Forget the fact that you live in a late place with leather furniture, modern furniture. There's art on every wall. You've got this teak bed. Forget all that. That don't mean nothing because they don't they, they don't understand what you're doing. So they're gonna go, like, yeah, 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 yeah. I know you're living well, but really, is that? Come on, man. Come on. You 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 got something else going. You got some bitch that's paying for that, right? Because you're giving it a good dick. I mean, seriously, I had a dude talk to me like that. He could not believe that those books on Amazon was paying for my lifestyle. He couldn't believe it. He was just like, really? And, and the thing is, what happens with that is a lot of people are going to hate on you because they cannot simply believe that you have more talent than they do. Be prepared for that, because as you go through this course and as you become successful, you're going to find out who your real friends are. You're going to have someone that you think's in your corner. They're not going to be in your corner. And then you're going to have someone that's going to surprise you by being in your corner. Because that happened to me. You will be blown away at how you improving your life is going to create ripples of disruption in your family, in your friend circle. Because unless you've already got like a really cool set of friends. Because there's some people that's going to be like that dude. That, mm -mm, nah. Mm -mm, nah. Uh-uh. Nah. Like, uh... It's funny. There's this comedian, Hannibal Burris, and he said something on one of his skits, you know, talking about orange juice. It actually happened to me. And it didn't happen. I wasn't in orange juice. I was in the grocery store. And if you've been watching this channel, you know I date all kinds of women. White women, black women, Asian women. I've had everything. And I happened to be in the grocery store with a girlfriend who happened to be white at the time. And it was this guy. And, you know, he was just, mm. you know, we had all of this broccoli and stuff because we we're going to make this casserole and everything and i'm like why is this guy just hating on the broccoli because we had like some broccoli and there was some check mix and because you know public's always having these sales buy one get one free so we had like all this check mix and other stuff and some bread and i was just like why is this guy hating and you know whenever i listen to hannibal burst i started cracking up because you know and hannibal says this it's like i was lost in the euphoria of getting the apple juice that i missed the racism it's just people are not going to be happy for you. They're not going to be happy for you because they're unhappy people. Trust me on that. And I'm trying to prepare you for success because everyone says, yeah, you'll get the money. And all. there's going to be another side that's going to blow your mind. And that's actually a reason a lot of people don't become successful. As strange as it is. Now, also, this is going to take time. It's going to take a lot of time uh, for you to get your plan together. You're going to have to, it, for your social media, it's just going to take time. Because once you figure it out, then you'll start to see tangible results. But in the beginning, you know, there's a lot of research. I'm not going to say guesswork. I'm going to say research, uh, exploration, and experimentation. It's like, oh, that didn't work. Well, this data's not right. This It's going to be that. And don't believe the lies about social media because... I have my Twitter hooked up automatically, and I really don't talk to people on Twitter. I get people follow me every now and then because you have to kind of go back to what is your mission? Is your mission to get a bunch of people to follow you on Twitter or is your mission to sell your product? And a lot of people switch missions and don't realize that they switch missions. It's like I get all these Twitter followers. I got to get all these Facebook followers. And they're not really thinking, no. What does my business do? It creates a product, it creates a service, and I must sell it. That gets lost so much when people start, and it happened, I, 12 Gs, I did it. And I, what did I do once I looked at the data and I was like, fuck this, and I went back to the old methods and my business got right back on track. So you just understand, as you do the social media thing, understand there are no quick fixes and you will do much better with a driver than just getting a whole bunch of Twitter followers, like people who pay for Twitter followers, who pay for YouTube videos, who pay for YouTube followers are idiots because those are, it's like sugar. You know, it's like a five pound bag of sugar. You know, it's like five pounds of food, right? But you get 
50 pounds of calories, then they're not good for you. They're just empty calories. So those those people, they won't help your business. And if YouTube catches you or Twitter, I don't know about Twitter, but I know if YouTube catches you, because there's a way you can do it where even if they know about it, you'll still be good. But if they catch you, they downgrade your channel. They stop putting up your stuff. I mean, YouTube is an ecosystem. So understand, don't buy any followers. Don't do not do any of that stuff. Like if you want to spend money for promotion, that's a different thing. But buy and don't because you're not going to get high quality followers. You're just not. Bam! Of course, you know, this is what was going on yesterday. Uh, this is day two. Remember, strip down everything from your business. Everything that doesn't make money. This kind of goes back to what I was just saying in the last slide. Don't lose focus of your true mission. Your true mission is to make money. That's your true mission. That's your true mission. So go through your business, go through your business process. And if there's something in your business process that is not mission critical and you don't need it to make money, get rid of it. Just get rid of it. A lot, you, you, you strip out. And let's just say the net gain is you have more time to bullshit and your business is still making the same money. That's a win. You've got more for less. And this is how you get that accomplished. You got to sit down every morning, write down six things you need to do. No more than six. Start at one, work until you're done. Wash, rinse, and repeat until you get all six done. Then the next day you create another list and another list. And what you what I do is if I get five done and there's one, I take that one, put it at the top of the list for the next day, and just create five more things. And you, you know, like I said, if you do this every day. For 30 days, that's 180 things that get done. You may find yourself doing more in a week than you do in a quarter. Because, you you, you know, uh, someone said this to me that at her job, she figured out that if she went into work and sat down and stayed at her desk for four hours, she got everything done that she needed done for the day. And then she could take the rest of the day and study for her uh, classes. She got promoted doing that. When you focus on the things that are important and start getting things done and don't get caught up in the land of busy work you can get so much done you can be so much productive and when you really define your process you can get eight hours worth of work or ten hours worth of work done in two or three hours that makes you very effective and when you become effective you become profitable all right and i'm just leaving this up here because a lot of people, like I said, this is day seven and, you know, we're getting deep and people want to record the sessions. I put out at the beginning before I start this, you show up, it's free. I'm not holding anything back. If you want to record the sessions, there's a fee and I get hate mail every day. I love it. I love it. I love it. All right. So that ends the presentation and I will go ahead and hit the questions. See what we got here. Let's see. Do, 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 do. Eddie Moore, I want to build what you're talking about in this video. Can you help me create this? Okay. Be a little bit more specific. Greg, I like trust fund chicks. Actually, she's one of the coolest people I know. She's not like a um, a snobbish trust fund chick. I mean, she's actually kind of embarrassed by it, really. Every list basically the same people. Do I keep calling the same folks over and over for each day's assignment? Okay, Dwayne, good question. You should be expanding your list. Because remember, and you know what I said, it's like you got to create a new list. Like this phone list, yeah. Because the thing is, I'm going to have to talk about the list thing again because this has kind of happened to me as a salesperson where I kind of like honed in on a few things because they were nice and they talked to me. You have to grow your list every day. Uh, my list grows every day by 10 to 30 people. So if you're growing your list every day, you're not talking to the same people every day, even if it's just one other person. Uh, Dwayne, I'll say this. Yesterday's six things list is very effective. I'm not done yet, but my desk is clean. First time in ages. And some items I have for sale are now in much better condition to sell, which means more money. Daily six things list. Do this one, folks. It's very effective. Uh, Aaron, hey, Glenn, I took your advice on my question yesterday about coming to voiced over channel, and now I have two full pages of planning, ideals, and notes. Nothing beats action.
Uh, this is Alicia. That's right. Uh, the 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 icon is delicious. Like I said, I don't mess with a lot of the, a lot of uh, social media things, but because yeah, I was like, I know what that is, but I don't know. Uh, let's see, Eddie Moore. The YouTube video had an early creating a system business where you can live off your residual income or efforts. Okay. Now, when you're talking about me helping you, we're, we're going into like one-on-one -on -one consulting. That's a whole different ball game. Can I help you do that? Yes. But like, can I help you do it in the group? Because this is the thing, and I'll, I'll just expand on it. When I do a consult, I have to find out a lot about you. Because let's just say you asked that question, and I've been asked that question by 10 different people. I'll sit down and, you know, I'll just like, what is your story? And I'll talk to 10 different people and it's going to be 10 different stories. So I can't give everyone the same answer. So, you know, for that one on one stuff, that's where, you know, we get into the consulting rim because I'm going to have to spend a significant amount of time with you to make you successful. So, you know, I'll do what I can in the group, but the one on ones are way more effective if you want speed. Uh, Dwayne, I understand the expansion of each list, but I need to go out and engage with folks to do this. Yes, you do. Greg Burke, can you post duplicate ads on Craigslist using the same ad with various Craigslist accounts? Actually, you can. <laughs> I do it all the time. You can post the same ad several different times if you have five or six Craigslist accounts. Uh, we're going to talk about that later on in the course. Okay, Eddie, so turn my pressure washing business into something that turns income. Okay, uh, essentially what you're going to have to do for that business to get to residual income is you're going to have to see yourself as a owner and not an employee. And right now, since you're doing everything, you see yourself as an employee. When you see yourself as an owner, you will look at it like this, that you'll hire someone to do the pressure washing and you won't do it anymore. And yes, you'll make less money. But the time that you're free up will give you the ability to create better business plans, go knock on more doors and build your business. Because see, the thing is, you have to see yourself as the man and the man doesn't do the work. <laughs> so, yeah, you could turn that business into residual income by um, essentially seeing yourself as the man. It's a mental shift, but it's a big one. Uh, this is Pedro. Ortiz. I love that name. For some reason, I do. I'm starting a tea restaurant. And I found someone else that is making a bakery. I would like for her to be my pastry supplier. Would it be better to have a supplier and make the pastries within the restaurant? Great question. And you've answered your own question. Get her as your supplier. And this is why. Because you're starting up that restaurant. There's a lot of things that you're going to have to deal with. Code enforcement, inspections. Keep it as lean as freaking possible. Keep it as uncomplicated as possible. I helped a friend. Her name is Marche, and the restaurant's uh, Le Petit Marche in the little East Atlanta where I used to live. And I made a recommendation that they follow, and that was the difference between them staying in business going out. Because uh, I was in there, and she was talking, and she's like, no one comes for dinner. I said, well, why don't you just get rid of dinner and serve breakfast all day? And they did it. And then they closed at 5 and the place expanded. She just got a new spot and she was able to pay cash for a condo. She She's open from the morning to a little bit after lunch. So in a very uncomplicated menu and she tests out a lot of stuff, but she's got a system. So definitely have them make the pastries. Yep. Dwayne, when we get to that point, please cover establishing multiple businesses on social media. How do we set up multiple accounts? First thing you want to do is set up multiple drivers. And also, for this course, you're, you're going to like, what, there's going to be one thing that's going to emerge. That's going to be your main thing. And you want to lock that down first before you like, okay, say you got 10 business ideas, right? Then you got 10 Twitter accounts and 10 Facebook, then 10... At one point, you're going, to re you're going to reach a point of diminishing returns very quickly unless you have help. If it's just you, once we go through the course and once you figure out what your businesses are going to be, because when I say a business, you can have a business that makes you 500 bucks a month and you know you work 10 hours a week on it or maybe 10 hours a month. That's a business. It's not a big business. It's not a boiling out of control business, but it's still a business. And the thing is, you build it and you can grow it slowly to a million dollar business over time. All right. 
uh, Alicia, I know you mentioned having five or so Craigslist accounts. Now, how does this work for me? I had to verify my account with a cell number. So how would you verify each account with the same cell phone number? You won't. You're going to have to go to what's called a Craigslist Verify phone number. They're like five bucks a piece. And you've got to buy five different phone numbers. Chris Ben, thanks for your help. Right now, the storage tax rookies are out in force, shifting the pimp and Craigslist. Yes, I bought your book and other sources and avenues. We'll do this until April until all the newbies out of cash. Tax season in the storage auction business is like famine, man. It is. I just would go out if I can get a deal, but I usually stockpile three to four months in advance because you have two bad events that are happening. People get their tax refunds and they pay off their delinquent units, so better units are gone. And then you have people out there, I got $5,000 because I got four kids and I always wanted to get a storage auction thing a try. <sighs> man, it is rough. Sure thing, Pedro. All right, this is from Chris. If you make a substantial amount of money on Craigslist, let's say 50, do you have to register as a business or is it all tax exempt? All right, Chris, I'm going to tell it to you like this. Um, you should register it as a business, but uh, I will just say that I had a year that I made about $200,000 cash on Craigslist. And you can just use your imagination to let you know what potentially happened with that. Um, that's a personal decision. I cannot give you guidance to do or not to do. I'm just going to say do what's the best thing that's right for you and your family. <laughs> I, I would also say uh, to keep people from getting in trouble, if you uh, use a credit card machine or a square, they're going to send that. That's going to leave a. That's going to be a, something that can be tracked when you use your uh, Square account or you use PayPal. And PayPal, I do believe, gives you a 1099 now. So if you were not, and I'm not telling you to not do this, but if you were not going to claim taxes, you would have to have it on a source that doesn't send a 1099. And if it's just cash, then you know that's on you. Just, you know, if you were going to go that way. But, you know, we're all good citizens and everybody's paying taxes and so on and so forth. But, yeah, you, that's a big, big personal decision right there. Let's see. That looks like that's all of the questions. All right. This is from Deb. Uh, Deb Williams. Craigslist in PA does not seem to work for me. How do I use the other to help me sell my items better? Craigslist is very much item driven, meaning if you're selling cell phones, MacBooks, things like that, they'll sell in its price point. Like say you have something like a dining room set. Conceivably, you can get $350 for it on Craigslist, but if you want money real quick, you put it up for $200, it'll probably be gone within hours. So that's how it works with Craigslist. If you have stuff that you know you can possibly get that money, you need to have the room to the, the, the storage or the warehousing to sit on it until it sells. It, it's really, you know, it's, it's really about your account. Uh, Jelini, I have accounts with Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, Craigslist, Backpage. So basically, I use all of these to drive traffic to my product and service. Uh, no. Twitter, probably not going to drive. Instagram is very interesting. Instagram does drive traffic because it's pictures. Your big your your big driver is going to be YouTube, back page, eh, Craigslist. It once again, this is kind of like a big general question because I don't know what you're selling. Because see, the thing is, I'll give you a good example of what I'm talking about. Um, I live in Atlanta, and I know I can sell modern furniture very easily here. I have a friend who lives up in Livonia; she can't sell it up there. If I, someone gave me like this big maple oak color cannonball bedroom set, I would have a horrible time selling that sucker down here. I could take it up to Lavanya. She that sucker be gone in days. So, depending upon your platform, depending upon your list, because this is the thing you got to do your research and figure out does this platform support what you're selling. If you're selling shoes, clothing, sex items, Instagram is your Instagram's your place to go. You put on Instagram, put a link there. Ooh. A woman, I, one of my clients, I can't tell you who because you can, you can look it up. She sells sexual clothing. Let's put it this way. And she's very built. And she puts stuff on, puts her stuff on herself on Instagram. 
and she has a link for, from her Instagram stuff to her page and um, she makes a lot of money she actually runs out of stuff so you gotta know the, you gotta know what people like Instagram like I have an Instagram account but I don't give two shits about pictures and when I do take pictures they're like landscapes or stuff like that Instagram is very much narcissistic you know self portraits and stuff like that so you, you really have to investigate who's on that platform and what they want to answer your question sure thing Karen how to create content which turns those likes to customers plat going again to the drivers your YouTube channel your podcasting uh, there's some guys and you can look them up uh, they have um, self-publishing podcast they turn that podcast into a book on how to write and that book is doing very well I think they're probably making about six or seven thousand dollars a month from that one book alone then they have other books the thing is the podcast was a driver because I want you to think about how, how do you make decisions does Twitter make you make a decision does Facebook make you a decision when you do a driver such as a YouTube video a podcast it's more than 30 seconds because most advertising is very quick a tweet it lasts what two minutes if that long depending upon the list so with a driver you get more focus time you get more face time that's why all this other stuff is not as effective unless it's you know the demographic like certain things that come through the pipeline this is David has selling ebooks affiliates through Craigslist ever worked for you on your uh, pen name products yes it has uh, I'll tell you I write erotica and I use the Craigslist personal section to get customers and it works like a charm oh yeah but see I'm I'll tell you I'll, I'll just give it up um, I going back to what I said about being able to get chicks on Craigslist writing ability is very important every woman women don't judge us like we judge women so a guy who comes across articulate grammatically and correct gets more credibility and I would just put up some stuff and I'm like hey yeah I got this story and I said oh I like the story and it's like well if you like more I've got 12 more books over here and that's how I get sales works very well <laughs> yeah New York City uh, once again it kind of depends on what you're selling Uh, Deb, how do I get others to help me sell my items on Craigslist or eBay? You have to pay them. I mean, I mean, we have to get a little deeper than that. Uh, this is Chris. Tip: Fairly new site offer up is working well, at least in Seattle. I had a decent result so far. This is my good deed for the year. David, mapping the right product to the right channel. Brilliant. I mean, I saw that in the apparel mart years ago. It's just like find out what people want and sell it to them versus kind of creating something and hope they buy, which, you know, gets frustrating at times. Okay. Uh, let's see. Let's see, Greg, I have got over 4,000 records to get over from when I was a club mobile DJ help. That gets interesting. Uh, what you need to do is put up a list up on Craigslist and put up that you're selling a DJ business. And what you do is, I got 4,000 records. This is the deal. I'll sell you all 4,000 records and also will tell you how to be a DJ. By offering more is how you get more. That's how I sold a few rooms where I had records because I went through all of them and um, they weren't like great because sometimes you get a record that's worth like, you know, a lot of money, but they were just regular stuff. And that's how we sold a lot of DJ equipment. Uh, this is Dwayne. This is for you, Deb. Trade services. As a maintenance man, I often need a helper or a bookkeeper for some small, simple job that takes time away from me swinging a hammer. That's a good, that's a good tip. That's a very good tip. Okay. Man, this went fast. Uh, we're at 5 o'clock, so I'm shutting this down. I want to say thanks to everyone that came out on a Saturday. Uh, tennis, once again, surprised me. And uh, I will see you good folks tomorrow. There won't be any videos for day 7, 8 on YouTube because I'm not going to do them on the weekends. But there will be like a compilation uh, video Monday morning. So with that, 
I'll see you good folks on the great on the good side. If you want to join Hustler University, just go to the last video. I mean, I'm sorry. If you want to join, <laughs> 30 days to $2,500. The links are under the last video on YouTube. All right. Have a great day.